Hi, hello, uh, this is my third video in the series devoted to my personal experience as a small investor in the stock market and that experience used as a material for teaching economics and management. So, because privately I am a small investor in the stock market and I like it and uh, besides i am a university teacher and a researcher i teach economics and management and i try to use precisely my personal experience as a uh, as a material for teaching the grounds that i have for that uh, are the results that i have over the seven months of this year in the presence of the pandemic I made almost 50% of return before tax on uh, the cash that I invested in the stock market. It is quite a nice result, given that on government bonds you can have like 2% a year. Uh, my 50% over 7 months is quite nice for a theoretician, for a scholar. So here in this video I want to focus on a precise problem or a puzzle, uh, something that I want to decide about. Anyway, I'm going to show you. So I pass to the next window. Here is a snapshot at my, of my portfolio as of essentially yesterday. Today it is August the 26th. And this is a snapshot at my portfolio of investment positions mm, on August the 25th, yesterday. And here you can see those uh, circled positions. Bayerische Motorenwerke, so BMW, Daimler, so essentially Mercedes, and Volkswagen. Three German automotive companies, apparently the same type of business operating in the same context. Yet, if you have a careful look, they give me a very different return on investment. I bought them all, I mean I opened those three investment positions in German uh, automotive companies in the same time. It was by the end of June this year. So this is the same window in time, the same industry, the same like core corporate culture, the German culture, and yet, despite those, let's say, essentially uh, uniform fundamental factors, the return on investment that I have on those uh, three is very different. BMW, as you can see, gives me 4.7% or was giving me yesterday 4.7% of return on investment. Daimler was giving me 15.9% return and I was slightly losing money on Volkswagen. Now there are two questions. One theoretical, which, is, which bothers me, and the theoretical is what the hell? Why is it happening the way is it happening? I just want to understand, especially in the context of using my uh, investor's experience as a basis for teaching economics and management. So I want to understand, and this is the first thing. The second thing, I guess that if I invest like the next portion of cash, the next like $350 or so, which I will be investing by the beginning of September. If I invest them in uh, those three, like more or less uniformly, I play a complex game. In a moment, I will show you the context of that game. Because I bet on the so far winner, the Daimler, I bet on the so far like good challenger and I bet on the loser. Why betting on the loser? Well, here I pass to a comparison of price graphs uh, in those, uh, uh, of, of those uh, three companies. Here, so you can see three graphs below me. 
So below the window with me in the uh, in the frame is the graph of the stock price of Daimler. On my yes, it is. I think if you watch it from your point of view, it is on my right. On my right, it is the graph of stock price of BMW, and like diagonally from me in the in the opposite corner of the video window, you have the graph of stock price for Volkswagen. If you look at those three graphs of stock price. They have very similar shapes. This is what kills me in, 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 in these cases. When I observe those trends, they are essentially similar. Um, by the way, all the three graphs cover the last 12 months, so like the last year. There was in each case like the high position approximately nine months ago. There was the trough. Uh, in the uh, in, in the beginning of this year due to uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic and then there is like a gentle recovery only that recovery is you look at the very end of those curves at the very end of, the, of those lines that recovery is subtly different for those three eh? and that subtle difference gives that difference in the rate of return that I have on those three investment positions. So, to the extent that those videos are supposed to teach like the technique and the wisdom of investment in the stock market, here you have the, an interesting example of the difference uh, between long-term trends in the stock market and the short-term changes. The long-term trends for all those three companies look the same. And honestly, I think that over maybe the next year or so, my rate of return on all of them will equalize. It is the same industry, the same market, the same degree of technological advancement, even the same corporate culture. And they follow the same trends as it can be seen by those price charts. So I essentially see no reason, although in a moment I will look for some reasons, I see no reason why they should differ. Yet, on the short run, those subtle differences in short-term changes give a difference. Because if you care to look like uh, at the chart of Volkswagen, uh, so diagonally in the opposite corner uh, of the window uh, fr from me, and next to it, the chart for Daimler, by the very end, you can see that subtle difference. Daimler climbs whilst Volkswagen falls slightly. And I want to, to understand what the hell, what is happening. So I do once again what is called the fundamental analysis. This analysis of charts is an example of what in the vocabulary of stock market investment is called the technical analysis. So essentially I take the chart uh, of the stock price and I try to understand the trends and the short-term changes. And now I will pass to the fundamental. So, I, so first of all I pass to the loser, to Volkswagen. What you can see here in the window of the video is Volkswagen's half-year report as published on their Investors Relations site. I try to browse quickly through that report in order to understand what is happening. So first of all, I consider the, the numbers such as they are given in that, in that report. Let me just squeeze it uh, accurately into the window of the video to give an accurate image. Okay, okay, cool. So, first of all, volume, so scale. I want to compare, first of all, uh, uh, Volkswagen in this window of the video. So, Volkswagen as the loser with the big winner, so with Daimler. I want to compare their half-year interim financial reports to try and find some clues what is happening. 
So in the case of Volkswagen, here you have H1, which means half the first half of the year, 2020 comp as compared to 2019, and the deliveries to customers in units. There is a fall. No? We can see that those deliveries fell by 27% in the case of Volkswagen. Uh, sales in that fell by 30% and the pro production fell by 32% and there was a reduction in the labor force uh, minus 1% and it all translated into a fall in the sales revenue here you can see it here minus 23.2% okay now i quickly jump to the half annual interim report of daimler which you can see now in the window and I try to investigate the same things. So, first of all, I want to have a look at their key figures, how they present themselves. So, revenue, uh, as for the second quarter, 30 billions of euro as for Daimler and once again I jump back to to Volkswagen and here you can see that in the second quarter of 2020 it was a revenue of 41 billions of euro so essentially they are in the same like volume bracket in the, in, in the same scale so the difference in the market performance or difference in the performance of their stock in the capital market is not really connected to their scale. They have similar scales of operations. Volkswagen is like 25% or 30% bigger, but they operate in the same segment like of tens of billions of euros of annual revenue. So I go now to Volkswagen once again and I want to have a highlight at their profits or, or losses and here it is for the first quarter of 2020 here it is Volkswagen yes it is Volkswagen uh, earnings before tax minus minus two billions of euros so they have a loss huh? Clearly, they start losing money, and you can compare it with the, sec with the second quarter of 2019, here. They had a substantial earning, a, a substantial profit before tax, 5.4, almost 5.5 billions of euro. So there is certainly a slump. Let's jump to Daimler and compare their situation. So here... I am at Daimler and here is an interesting thing. You can see that category EBIT I will magnify it here EBIT EBIT is uh, like uh, profit before interest and tax. Uh, so it is similar to operational profit and in the case of Daimler if you now compare let me see if it is visible if you compare that EBIT category that operational profit or operational income for those second quarters of two consecutive years second quarter of 2019 and second quarter of 2020 each time it was negative. In 2019 it was minus 1.56 billions of euro and in 2020 it was minus 1.7 billions of euro. So here we have a paradox. Once again, if we look at the portfolio, Daimler in the stock market gave me a much better yield or almost 16% since June and Volkswagen made me lose money. 
I understand that now they are both in a tight spot financially, uh, but uh, the, but the paradox is that uh, Volkswagen fell into that tight spot, into that zone of uh, nega or operational loss. They fell from a nicely positive position one year ago. Uh, Daimler essentially is in a slightly worse uh, position as compared to the last year, uh, but not much worse. Huh? So now this is uh, really about people's expectations. Huh? Uh, when you learn uh, ma uh, microeconomics from a textbook, you can find a chapter or a sub, or a sub chapter called paradoxes. Paradoxes which uh, regard the so-called law of demand. And there are uh, certain situations when prices change in a way which is not understandable. Usually when people uh, are willing to pay for something according mostly to their expectations as for what other people will do. And this is a case. Huh? Really, the fundamental factors seem to be in favor of Volkswagen because they have a bigger scale of operations and although they have an operational loss that uh, one year ago they have a nice profit. So there is that expectation that if only those adverse COVID-19 related uh, in environment becomes a little bit more friendly, then they can quickly become profitable again. In the case of Daimler, they have, they have a loss now and they had a loss last year. So it seems that the COVID impacted them just slightly. Okay, let's see what do those guys write about their respective environments. So now I go once again to the report to the half annual report by Volkswagen and I try to find, okay, here it is, and I try to find something that they write about the, the macroeconomic environment. Here you have the highlights, the key facts. So business heavily impacted by COVID-19. Yes, we can guess it is true. Here is a commentary on the COVID-19 environment. I look something about, I look for something about uh, ma the macroeconomic environment. Business development, yes, general economic development. The global spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus The associated restrictions and the resulting downturn in demand and supply meant that growth in the world economy was negative in the first half of 2020. The average rate of expansion of gross domestic product was far below the previous year's level in both the advanced economies and the emerging markets. At country level, performance in the reporting period depended on the extent to which the negative impacts of the global 19 pandemic were already materializing. Okay, so they acknowledge that there was like an adverse environment at Volkswagen. Now I go to Daimler and I wonder what do those guys write or how do they judge the macroeconomic environment. So I... Interesting commentary here. Stock exchanges and automotive shares with a volatile upward trend in second quarter of 2020. Interesting, let's read it. Hmm? After a brief period of weakness at the beginning of the second quarter, the supporting measures taken by central banks and governments, some of which were augmented during the period under review, began to take effect. Stock market indices worldwide climbed during the quarter, that's making up a larger part of the losses from the previous months. Yes, I experienced that. Automotive stocks also benefited from tailwinds in the second quarter with investors increasing their share positions again in the past three months. 
true for Daimler, not really true for Volkswagen. Automotive share prices were boosted in particular by the support measures and economic policy measures taken, as well as, the by, uh, as by the fall in oil prices. But car sales in China also recovered faster in the second quarter than many market participants had expected. Daimler's share price also displayed a significant recovery in the second quarter of 2020 after initial losses. Yes, so essentially they comment on the fact which I know. It doesn't explain exactly why Volkswagen is so low. And successful refinancing in a volatile market environment. In the second quarter of 2020, the Daimler Group once again successfully understood refinancing in the international money and capital markets despite a very volatile market environment. Okay, interim management, the world economic downturn, business development seen from the point of view of Daimler now. Already in the first quarter of the year, the global spread of the coronavirus and the countermeasures taken had a considerably uh, restricted economic activity. First in China and then later in Europe, the United States and other markets. Here is something which looks interesting. I will even highlight that text. The development of worldwide demand for cars continued uh, to be impacted by the corona crisis. The significantly negative market development, which had already started in the first quarter, continued in the second and in nearly all sales regions important to Daimler. However, April probably marked the low point of the crisis in many places. Maybe so since April, uh, automotive sales are supposed to grow. We can see here uh, the European market also reached Excuse me, okay, something has... I clicked the wrong comment. Okay, the European market also reached its low point in April with total sales about a quarter of the prior year volume. Although the decreases in May and June were no longer quite as drastic, there was a sharp overall fall in second quarter car sales. The Western European sales market declined drastically with a slump of more than 50%. Okay, so now to give like, a, like, let's say like a bottom line to that short investigation which I have just shown you. Apparently, as I go through those three cases, through Daimler, through Volkswagen and through BMW, there is something which I read in management textbooks a long time ago. When we have in the same industry companies or brands in like different shelves of quality. So if we have like luxury brands as compared to those brands for everyone, in the times of crisis, when the demand slumps, the, the luxury brands seem to be doing better than those brands for everyone. Now, as I have those three cases, Daimler, BMW and Volkswagen, Volkswagen, as its name indicates, uh, so Volkswagen, it is the car for the common folks, uh, for the common people. I, I know they have Audi cars in their group, which are like an, a higher shelf of quality. Yet I think that right now investors in the stock market are very largely driven, as for these three cases, by the simple association of the like degree of luxury, uh, of the degree of luxury uh, that they attach intuitively uh, to each of those brands. Apparently, they attach the greatest reputation of luxury to Daimler, so to Mercedes, a little bit less to BMW and definitely less to Volkswagen. This is a strange situation, but this is something uh, which I have faced many times uh, 
in my short, although fruitful, uh, career of small investor in the stock market. There is something about those apparently or apparent caprices of other investors. When I see such short-term differences like this, I always wonder, should I follow the caprices of other people? So should I always bet on the short-term winner? Or should I spread my investment more evenly? So bet on the winner, bet on the ambitious challenger and bet on the loser. My first thought is that I, I will bet on all three because uh, Volkswagen is still relatively cheap now. If I buy in a little bit, so I, if I bid a little bit more of their shares, I will like equalize my starting base as compared with the uh, with those two other investment positions as for as so as compared with Daimler and uh, BMW. Okay, so these were those loose thoughts about three interesting cases in my investment portfolio. And well, see you later and as usually have fun with science. Visit my uh, scientific blog, discoversocialsciences.com. You can subscribe there, you can become a follower. And have fun with life. Bye.